Men. Always glad to have you here, Carl, every week. Uh, just, I mean, full of good information. People out there have questions. I mean, there's so much that you cover. Yeah. Workers' comp, auto accidents, Social Security, all of that. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. And nor normally I'm here every Tuesday, but uh -huh. I have to be in court tomorrow, so that's why you all worked me in to put me on oh, today. Oh, because we're definitely, yes, we're not go letting a week go by with, without you. And um, we, we open up the phone lines, 276-2118. We've already got a caller on the line, so we're Great. just going to jump right into it. Sure. We've got Shelby in Okalona on the line. Hi, Shelby. Yes, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. morning. What's your question yes. for Carl? Yes, I have a question. I'm on a private lot in a restaurant and somebody backs into your truck and gets the bumper or the fender. Are they still reliable or can you make it, they say you can't make a fender? What, what can you do? Yeah, that's always a tough issue because typically the police won't come out to a private parking lot like that and see these situations a lot in, in various department stores or shopping center parking lots. Yes, you're still responsible even if you're not on a public road uh, or whoever's at fault. Sometimes the, the more challenge is, you know, proving who's at fault without that documentation from the police report. But, but yes, if someone backs into your car and hits you even on a private parking lot, they're still responsible for that negligence. So definitely still make a claim. You know, the, the, you know the, sometimes you run into a situation of, well, then it, they try to dispute over, well, what really happened or who backed into whom. Uh, I've even had situations where we've had to get this, or not in a prop property damage, but I mean, I had a client who's a pedestrian that was hit in a parking lot, and we actually had to go get the videotape, you know, the surveillance, how stores now have video surveillance of the outside of the property. We actually had to get the video surveillance to really prove what happened. So, but yes, they're still responsible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Shelby, very much for your question. If you have a question for Carl, we are uh, opening up the phone lines, 276-2118. Definitely give us a call. And Carl, I just want to... Um, sort of reiterate for those who are just joining Louisville Live this morning, have not met you before, you do have offices in both Jeffersonville and Louisville. Now, one of the things that I, I uh, think is a great benefit that I can offer is that since we're right on the border here, I'm licensed to practice both, uh, both sides of the river, Indiana and Kentucky. So often some attorneys on one side or the other because they'll have a client that called them that got hit in the other state, even if they're not licensed there, they still try to want to go ahead and do that case. But, you know, I, I really think the better way is to, you know, have someone that is truly licensed in that state because, you know, legally and ethically it's called practicing law, uh, unauthorized practice of law because, you know, you have to be licensed in the state where you're, the case is you're handling. And you've even mentioned before to beware of, I think, mail or email that you may get because sometimes places as far away as Texas may send communication saying we can help you and take care of your case, but they cannot if they are not licensed. Right, the yes, actually, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Bar Association actually investigated a law firm in Texas that had on their website that if you get hurt in Kentucky, you don't need a Kentucky lawyer, you can hire us and we can take care of you even though they weren't licensed here. The Bar Association made them take that okay. down. Well, beware of that. Again, guys, 276-2118 is the number to call with your legal questions for Carl. We're also taking your emails live at WBKI.TV. We have an email here from Tony in Louisville. We're, we're always getting emails and, and, and phone calls, so we, we try to get them as many of them out here as we can. And uh, Tony says, if they move up the age for Social Security retirement, Will that also change the rules with Social Security disability? Yeah, good question, Tony. But those are two different t animals. I mean, Social Security retirement has different rules than Social Security disability. And that's always something that uh, people, I think people don't really think about when you talk about, well, they say privatization of Social Security. Well, Social Security retirement, of course, you know, that's what you've paid into. But Social Security disability, if you get hurt and you can't work at all, you know, so many people don't have a private disability plan where if you just are you, you're really hurt and you just cannot work at all uh, in any type of job, then very few people have a private disability plan, so they have to rely on Social Security disability, and it's really not related to age. It's just related on uh, your, uh, you do have to have a work history, uh, but, you know, if you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you can't work, then you can get Social Security disability to have some income come in because you can't work. Okay. 
All right. Well, thank you to Tony for that email. And we want to get some information up on the screen again, Carl, for those who have not met you yet. Um, you know, we've explained that you practice both in um, Kentucky and Indiana. And the areas uh, that Carl practices are medical malpractice, motor vehicle accidents, personal injury law, social security, workers' comp, and so much more. And, and that's definitely true, Carl, because when I went to visit your website, I was just <laughs> shocked by the long list of, of areas that you're able to help people with. But it's all focused on in, injury claims, exactly. bodily injury claims. There you know, are many so aspects of there that. There are many, many aspects. So we try to go through a list of different types of injury claims, whether you know from auto accidents to being hurt on mm -hmm. the river. I'm hand, I handle right. claims for barge workers on the Ohio River even. I see. And so all it, it all focuses around uh, claims for bodily injury. Okay, and there you see the number on your screen, 1-800-ACCIDENT, is where you can call directly to Carl's office if you've been in an accident, again, or have, you know, um, an issue and you want to see if you have a case, definitely give them a call, 1-800-ACCIDENT, or TrumanLaw.com is where you can go to find informa more information about the firm. We do have another um, email from David in Fairdale. Like mm -hmm. I said, I know that you get a lot of them there on your website. We get them here, mm -hmm. too. David says, I got into a wreck in May after a car all but ran me off the road. I was hurt, out of work for two months, and I'm still going through some therapy. They never did find the driver. Everything is okay, but returning to work has been slow. My employer is starting to get a little upset. Am I protected if they try to get rid of me? Very good question. Yeah, those are, and that's, that is a great fact scenario. It's almost like mm -hmm. a, a bar exam question, almost, <laughs> because there are a lot of issues that go into that one question. First of all, the guy that ran you off the road, one of the things that you have to look at is, was there any impact between the two cars? If someone just, you know, swerves towards you and you swerve to miss them and there's no impact and they run off and they, and they uh, never find them, you know, we hear the term hit and run. Well, that's also called a miss and run because they never actually hit you. If they hit you, you can make a claim against your own uninsured motorist coverage, but if there's no impact, it's called the impact rule, then, then there's really not going to be anything you can do about that. Regarding protecting your job, the only protection that you really have, and this is, applies whether it's workers' comp on the job injury or any type of injury or illness, you do have protection under what's called the Family Medical Leave Act. And so I suggest, you know, that is uh, enforced by the Department of Labor. You can go onto their website and get more information uh, that it does provide up to 12 weeks of unpaid medical leave for if you or a member of your family, you need to miss work to take care of them. All right. Well, thank you for that. And one more time, we want to put some information up on the screen again to remind people of how you're able to help them, the different areas. Guys, any of these areas that you found yourself, if you believe you're the victim of medical malpractice, you've been in an accident, social security questions, workers' comp, 1-800-ACCIDENT is the number to call. Carl, thank you, as always, for being thank here. You. Good to see you, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Great. Thank you. Guys, Carl Truman, Legal Line here on Louisville Live this morning.